Hello everyone, you're welcome this wonderful morning. Once again, I bring greetings to you anywhere you watch me from or see me or eye me or feel me from. You're welcome to this wonderful program. Do me one favor, try and just like, like the video. Um, I bring greetings once again anywhere you are. Um, Nigeria is crumbling, Nigeria is sinking, Nigeria is diminishing. For those that don't know or don't understand, um, honestly, I don't know what is left. I don't know what is left of Nigeria. And uh, today, as we tell you, yesterday, uh, in Enugu, Enugu, all of you know Enugu, Peter Mba, you know why I'm hammering this Enugu, Enugu, because Peter Mba of Enugu have done, I don't know, let me not say he, he's done evil, but we know Peter Mba of Enugu to be one of the people that are fighting against us, standing against us doing everything to stop Biafra and then you know every day we tell you of the records records upon records evil records of um, bad records that are coming in from Enugu and uh, it's like we are lying just yesterday again students we are abducted from Enugu State College University. Yesterday, just this yesterday, students were abducted. I just uh, just make you the understand why we are fighting. And these people will be out there making the world to believe that we are miscreants. They will go out there and the post to make their useless post and the DC people making people to believe that we are just trying to paint bad pictures and negative pictures of them. Enugu is, I don't know, Enugu is not good now. Enugu is facing. If you are in Enugu, if you are in Enugu, I want you to be careful. If you have anybody in Enugu, tell them to be very, very careful. Peter Ba did not only come to destroy people's, break people's heart and destroy their ancestral homes. Peter Ba is there allowing these people in the name of Heather. So what, remember Enugu State have passed the bill at that thing, first and second, I think the last, or even the third, I don't know if it is just to activate it or to enact it or it is, I don't know, but the law has been passed in Enugu on open grazing and they were told to go and uh, the people of Enugu were told you have to handle it. This is the way you live. This St. Peter Mba have destroyed people's homes, or people's ancestral homes. Take over their land, their farms, no compensation, no, uh, no, 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 no notification, no information. They just woke up in the morning and start destroying people's property. And above all, the worst part of it is the people's ancestral homes that has been destroyed. And then these same people he is bringing in as his friends from the Funani are the people committing all this evil, going into schools, kidnapping our people, kidnapping our children. And we will come here every day to listen to people be rant and make noise and they speak good English. Look like an Aburo or Lene Daburo. Well, we'll go into that, we'll talk, or maybe I'll just talk about that. We'll have many news. Nigeria properties, more are coming to be confiscated. More. 
more, more will be confiscated. As you are looking at the screen, you see what I'm saying? They have done that. They have um, a seizure or confiscation has taken place in uh, France. Now they are heading to United Kingdom. We will get to that. Is for you to understand those are fighting to keep Nigeria. I don't know what you saw. I don't know what you have seen. I don't know what you are seeing. That will make you stand up against your own right, against your people to fight them. Um, to fight for what me, I don't even know. So what I was telling you about in who is here, here is the news. As you can see, that is the news. And persons invading Nugu College abduct students. If they have gotten to the point of um, <clears throat> going to our schools now abducting children and the way I, I want you to see anyway we will come to that point we are coming there then um on the on the foreign news we see israel i know you may say i'm not good in bringing you uh foreign news like israeli news i'm bringing this news israel today for a purpose and I will say why I think this is where we are going to be starting this broadcast this morning. Israel, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu says Israel is prepared for any threat determined to defend itself. If Israel, till now that we are here, me and you, now that we are here, are still determined despite all threat of war threat despite all attack israel is still they ready to defend themselves and they are not hiding it they are telling you if you touch me i will mod you if you push me i will boot you if your finger touches me i will punch you that is what they're telling you why won't you stand up and fight for your freedom why will you sit down and watch people come to your land, abduct or kidnap your children, do to them what they like? Some you see, some you don't see, and there is nothing you can do about it. They have taken them, nobody is talking about them again. All the people they have been kidnapping before the Nigeria government used to go and pay ransom and bring them back. If you watch since this one year now, nobody pays. Tinubu is not paying to bring back anybody. Buhari used to pay because they are his people. He is settling them. But now nobody pays. And the, the, these people they kidnap don't come back. So why are we going to sit down and watch these people? Obasanjo will sit there. You see, when I tell people that Obasanjo is not a good person, you don't understand. Maybe if we have time, we'll talk about it. Obasanjo, I was trying to get the full video, but now i gotten the part I wanted to be sure. Because I don't want to say things that I don't know. I'm not sure. I got it clear. He said he is using Igbos. He said he used Igbos to win the war. Blackmailing people with their own people. And that is the same thing they are trying to do now. But that is the what when you hear our Prime Minister telling you about eternal conflict. Is what Obasanjo and the rest of them, mainly Obasanjo, is doing. He will come out in the street and cry, Hey, Ibophobia is against Ibo. Don't do Ibophobia against Ibo. It's not good. Hey, stop this Ibophobia. Obasanjo will go behind and tell your brother, give him money. Go and destroy what your brothers are doing. Is he not the worst kind of human being you will ever see? So, 
you must be ready to defend your freedom or your freedom will be taken. Freedom is always taken, either taken by your enemy or taken by you. It doesn't matter. Freedom is always there and somebody must take it. So is it that you that the freedom rightfully belong to take it or someone else will take the freedom? Like it or leave it. That's your own. Deal with it. After all, Peter Bass said that um, the, the, the Funanese have come to stay in Enugu. Deal with it. So the freedom we are telling you about is something that you need. You must deal with this situation stopping you from activating your freedom. We need freedom. We need it. So Israel, always in the midst of war. Have you imagined why Israel is always in the midst of war? Why are they so much hated? Have you imagined as well? Why do you have these similarities with Israel? Israel are good in crafts. They are very good in crafts. And the we, the Biafras, are very good in crafts. The only difference is that their color is different. Their skin color is different from our skin color. But everything, lifestyle, educational system, religious system, technology, the way you go to Israel, you see a boy without knowledge of anything will come and bring that and manufacture it, innovate it. It's the same way you see it in Africa. It's the same way you see it in Biafra. So you find out that the same thing that is going against Israel is now going against you. Before Israel become a nation, everybody stood against them. Even the demons stood against them. Even the fellow Israelites stood against them because people were using their own people against them. The same thing that is happening to us today. The same thing happening to us today. They use people against people. I think it will be good if we we'll watch that or pass and your video. Just that. Maybe later I will do uh, um I will do analysis on that, but just to make you understand that if you don't fight for your freedom, nobody's coming to fight for your freedom for you. Nobody. No matter what happens, no matter how it happens, nobody. Your freedom is there. It's just like this in the air, dangling in the air. If you are not ready to take it, if this is your freedom, this is the way it is in the air, just like this, you have to take it. If you don't, somebody else is there ready to take it to. Ah. Somebody is there to take it. It's up to you to take it. So why are we fighting for this, our freedom today? I'm the persons invaded in Nubu College, adult students. You see, this is why this coming uh, anyway, although this coming um, uh, um, ghost town is not for um, ordinary beer friends, it's for particular located places. So um, uh, anyway, but to, this is why, let me continue with what I was saying. This is why when you hear sit at home, you should observe it. They will tell you that the school, oh, you don't go to school, oh, not oh, you fail your exam. So is it not in the same school that they come and abduct the same children? You go into school. We tell you that Nigeria is corrupt everywhere. Going to school in Nigeria is like 
going to school in hell. You don't go to hell to learn. You go to hell to get destroyed. It will be better for everybody to fight for freedom to come. Then if you want to go to school, you go to school. Now see, let me just read it for you. Listen, this is Enugu. This is why I am interested in reading it for you. Enugu State, Pitamba. I'm the person in Enugu College abduct student. The police said the student we are were abducted on Thursday while they were driving out of the college in the Oji River Council area of the state. Some armed persons abducted five students of the college of a college in Enugu, Southeast Nigeria. The assailants were said to have attacked the students while they were driving out of the Enugu State College of Health Technology in Oji River, in Oji River Council of the state. The police spokesperson in Enugu State, Daniel Ndukwe, who disclosed this in a statement on Saturday, said the incident, the incident occurred. Allow me to read it now. Eh? Why, why all this rubbish? The incident occurred on Thursday evening. Mr. Ndukwe, Ndukwe, a deputy superintendent of police, said a report alleging that, alleging, can you imagine? A report alleging. They told you, you see, you see the problem I'm having with the people, both journalists, both police. This is why the Biafran army is against them. You were told that on Thursday, students were abducted. And then by Thursday, you did not do your investigation. You did not go to the school. Friday, you did not. Saturday. You are coming to tell us that the report is alleged. Saturday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They came to tell you it's alleged. You can imagine. That is a country for you. When you see them... Bring out their muscles is when it comes to go and carry out oppression, wipe Biafran's oppression down, Biafra oppression down, some Biafra oppression, crocodile out, Biafran's oppression, python swallow Biafran's. You will see them come out and walk. Listen, Mr. Ndukwe, a deputy superintendent of police, said that a report alleging that a countless number of students were abducted from the college during the attack was false and misleading. But it is the, the, to tell you that the, 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 the that, that to, for him to tell you that countless students were abducted is false, but that People were abducted is alleged. The police spokesperson said on Thursday evening, operatives received a tip off about the attack on the college. At the college, the operatives, the operatives immediately hastened to the scene rescuing two of the victims allegedly abducted the white three other are yet to be found how did you rescue the two from who did you rescue the two do you see the la oh my god mr Ndukwe said the operative launched vigorous operations to rescue the three other victims and the track down the abductors the commissioner of police in Enugu State, Kanayo Uzo Ebu, ordered the operation for the rescue of the abducted victim. He said, abduction for ransom, cash of, abdu uh, cash of abduction for ransom have been on the increase across the state 
and in the entire southeast in recent times so the as he told you as he's telling you now budget highlights uh, finance minister uh, uh, is good presented the union budget 2024 in parliament focusing on i don't know if you are getting productivity if you rescued two out of the five who did you rescue them from how did you rescue them how did you rescue them you see why more reason why everybody wants to fight now i want you to listen to us um i don't believe that anybody in this country should be driven from away from any part of this country because this country will own it together listen when I was fighting for the war of unity in this country, I used Igbos, Hausa, Yoruba. Even though we were fighting against Igbos, not that you should go, but that you should come. And I used Igbos to fight Igbos to come. Did you get the message? He used the Igbos to fight Igbos to come. You think he's, he's using Igbo to fight Igbo peacefully? No. When you see them kidnap on Nam the Kano, they used Igbos to kidnap on Nam the Kano. When you see them trying to assassinate Simon Eba, they used Igbo to try assassinating Simon Eba. When you see them launching Operation Golden Down, Operation Wipeout to Doka, Operation Wipeout to Ebu, Operation Wipeout to Odi, Operation Wipeout to Ebu, Operation Wipeout to Okwama, they used Ebo. It's been always using you against your own brother, using your brother against you, kidnapping people. This, you remember when uh, what is his name? Um, the little Hitler in a former little Hitler, now Labour prefect um, Omahi, Dave Omahi. Dave Omahi have to make pledge of bounty of two million naira if you will be able to identify anybody that demand for freedom. Just point at him, he tell you if anybody you know. He's saying, I want Biafra. Just point him, you get two million naira. And many people were disappeared. Many people were murdered. Many people disappeared until today. We have not seen them. Who did they use? Ibo. So when you see them speaking, I want you to remember this is the same of Basanjo who came all the way from Ogun State to Enugu to remind you that Biafra died 50 years ago and that they buried Biafra 50 years ago. He opened this same mouth and tell us in our own soil that the Biafra died and they buried it in the house of one useless man called Simon in Enugu. He said it. I will try and make it. I'll find the video. I don't know if any of you have the video. You let me know. I will ask my minister for information because he's good in keeping records. He says so. So he's not telling you that they have to use you against your brother. They have to use your brother against you. Have you seen the reason why you must not stop? Seen the reason why you must not stop when you hear sit at home, people will start telling you, Hey, your business, hey, your school. Is he not in the same school that they went and kidnapped students? And this one that they have begun, they will continue now. It's just an opening, they are beginning, they are just beginning this. And when you watch where all these things are coming from, they are coming from the place where they most fight against the, the coming of Yafra. They have they, they have they have succeeded in watching the people of Enugu, people of a boy, making them believe that Simon Epa is against them and not for them. 
So they are the ones being used to blackmail the freedom of their people. If they see anybody as a man, Biafra army, they are going to report him, report his family to be murdered, to be kidnapped, and never return. So when you hear them tell you using him with the call him with the come for good, it's not to come for good. It's to use him both to blackmail and eliminate him. Listen to him again before we switch over to another thing. Wait. Um, I don't believe that anybody in this country should be driven from away from any part of this country. Because this Listen country will own it together. When he said he we owe it together. We owe it together. We own the country. Which country do you own together? As this man of Basanjo, which country did you own together? You are who? Own what? You own this country together. You deny the bear to the opportunity to import meat, import rice. You destroy the factories belonging to you. You destroy the businesses belonging to you. And all of a sudden, you come back to tell us you own this country. Which country? Was there a country? Is there a country you own? Obasanjo was the beginning of the torment in the business of Igbo people. He destroyed, confiscated many Igbo people's businesses, cars, fridges, electronics. This man you're looking at here, his regime sent many people home empty-handed his regime sent many people to LA grave and to all of a sudden you belong to the same country one thing that identifies you as a nigeria nothing only that they are coming to milk the oil in your land that is the only thing that identifies you as a nigeria that there is an oil in your land had it been that oil is not there you would have been you you would have been that your land would have been sunk long time ago but because of that oil, you think the original plan of the Biafra uh, war against Biafra in 1960-70 was just to fight bu -bu -bu -bu, to bring you to, to stand? No. It was to wipe you out so that there wouldn't be any threat tomorrow. And they couldn't do that. Why do you think they took everything, your assets, your businesses, your physical cards, and gave you only 20 pounds? So that you will die of hunger, but you refuse to die. Listen to him tell you how he used Ibo against Ibo. When I was fighting for the war of unity in this country, I used Ibo's, Hausa, Yoruba. Even though we were fighting against Ibo. Not that you should go, but that you should come. Yeah. And I use Igbo. Did you see the expression? And I use Igbos. Do you see? Did, did you see him? And I use Igbos. Bragging. It's not what you think. It's not just using you. Who did he use to bring who? When we tell you that Obasanjo is the brain behind kidnapping Namdegano, trying to kidnap Simon or assassinate him, you don't understand. Obasanjo have never regretted a bit of what he did to Biafra people. Obasanjo have never regretted a bit. None of them. 
and if care is not taken, you don't know why God is keeping you Obasanjo. You don't know why God is keeping you T.Y. Danjuma. You don't know why God is keeping you Yakub Gowon. God is keeping you to make up for your wicked evil you carried out against our people. And you have been growing this old. Don't die after this old age without making up. At least opening your mouth and say, I am sorry, Igbo people. I am sorry, Biafra people, forgive me. Use the Igbos against the Igbos. Happy. He did something that nobody could do. So when you hear our Prime Minister tell you about eternal conflict, I want you to understand what is going on. The eternal conflict is on, but we are overcoming them. All of them. All of them. All of them. And you will see some people still believing that Nigeria is going to work. People still believe that Nigeria is going to work, is going to produce. And then when I see them, I laugh at them. When I see them, I laugh at them. Did you see the, um, you see it? Chinese firm moves to confiscate 20 million pounds P and ID award in United Kingdom two presidential jets two properties in Liverpool all Nigerian property they are not done this is to tell you that the this contract is not a baby contract what happened to the money what happened to the money? If you stop the contract, why didn't you stop the money from coming into your account? Are you getting the message? More destruction are coming upon them, but the people are not seeing it. You will not see them discuss the fissure of the uh, the fissure and the, the Fissure coming of the, the destruction that is coming in the fissure. They, don't, they will not come and discuss it for you. Go to news today. Go to their news. You will not see such thing. You will only see them telling you nonsense things that are not true things that are not real. Telling you evil about this, about that. Do da boo ba boo boo boom bam bam. Nothing. Nothing. Not tell you anything good. Will always tell you nonsense upon nonsense, giving you hopes, making you to believe that is even hope anywhere. When there is nothing like a hope, not to talk of no hope for Nigeria. There has never been, you see, we used to tell people that Nigeria have always been lie. The lies they tell people is that there is a Nigeria. And the, the lie they kept telling people is that there is a Nigeria. But the truth is that there was not. There is not. And there is not in future. There will not be in future. It is not going to be because it's all lie. Imagine after three private, after three presidential jets, Nigeria, after three Nigeria presidential jets confiscated in uh, France, 
they are moving to London. Chinese firm, the same Chinese firm, moves to confiscate 20 million pounds award in United Kingdom. Two presidential jet, two properties in Liverpool. These two properties, uh, uh, don't be surprised, your embassy in United Kingdom and um, uh, yeah, your, your embassy in UK and uh, what again? Your embassy and... Um, what house again do you have? Or maybe your presidential house in United Kingdom and your embassy in United Kingdom. Yeah, don't be surprised. I'm telling you the truth. You will never see anything. You will never see anything. The two properties likely to be, they go collect your embassy, they go collect your presidential villa for United Kingdom. After they don't collect 20 million pounds. 20 million pounds. I see them calling Jonathan, come, come and join us 2027. We will make you prison. If Jonathan look at them, Jonathan is a fool. If Jonathan will look at anything Nigeria political system, he's a fool. The same people that dragged you in the mud, the same people that rejected you, rejected you, blasphemed you, made you nothing before any other body. The whole world joined them in making you a mockery. The same Jonathan that wanted to fight insecurity went and uh, 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 went and contracted professionals to fight against these Boko Haram insurgents. Then whole not gathered and said to Jonathan, "If you try to bomb or shoot anybody, we will finish you." Jonathan withdraw. Nobody is telling you about that. Go and find out. Go and find out. Jonathan, Jonathan, when the Shiba girls were kidnapped, Jonathan moved to contract professionals from outside, maybe people like Wagner to come and they rescue those girls. Since Nigeria Army said they cannot do anything, Jonathan moved because Nigeria Army is just something they are today. They have been. Nigeria army could not do anything. Jonathan tried. You have every weapon. You have every arm. You have every machine. Go. They said, Oga, we no go fit do anything. Jonathan said, okay. He is going to contract professionals from outside the world to come and they rescue these girls. The same northerners said to him, if you try him, if you try him, Jonathan, They just use it to blackmail him out of power, to take the power they have been wanting to take, to get it. Who are you, Jonathan, to be head over me? Who are you, Jonathan? They were thinking that Tinubu is coming to power to die tomorrow so that their brother Chetima will be in power. And unfortunately for them, Tinubu come there and get more energy and they are not happy. They want Tinubu out. You think this and the bad government, the people of the Yoruba land are Mumu. You see why I'm calling them fools? Ignorant fools. You think you're in the same shoes, room, in the same page with the, the northerners. The northerners are demonstrating that they need Tinubu out. They are calling Nigeria military to take over power against your own brother Tinubu, and you are still protesting against the Tinubu. You see, common sense on a no get. Common sense on a no get. For join the people that are fighting for freedom, so they go and go fight for freedom the way you could. Mm -mm. Okay, now support your brother Tinubu. You don't even know how to support your brother. You are foolishly being misled to support the North. You think saying uh, bad government did the protest? What do you call bad government and Russia flag? 
Waiting concern bad government and damage should come and take over from Tinubu. How is what happening now in this Tinubu era worse than what happened in Buhari era? I am asking you a question. All the money that the Tinubu, uh, what is his name, the Buhari, Buhari stole, and all the Boko Haram insurgents he allowed to come into the country called Nigeria, and all the Funani come that came in in the name of Headers have succeeded in eliminating all the farmers in the middle of it. They have succeeded in taking over all the communities. So how are you going to get food? You think your problem started because Tinubu came into power? No. It's just like a pregnant that have been there. In the ninth month, somebody will carry the pregnant woman in the delivery day. You carry the woman to the hospital. They call they catch you because the woman no get husband. They say, Hey, now you must come here. Now you must come and stand as the father. It's just what it looks like. Nigeria, forget I don't have anything with it. I mean, I love what is happening and I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying this Nigeria today. Because this is what you people want. So eat what you sold. Eat the food you cooked. The food don't don't don't. don't, don't. So eat. You prepare the delicious meal for yourself. Eat. Tinobu is like a person caught in a sea on a sink on, on a crime scene. You don't know that. You know, when 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 crime don't happen, finish. The police you can't do investigation, even in the even in the Western world, in a country, even in countries, not in Nigeria, not the top Nigeria, even because Nigeria they see you now, you commit the crime. But in the Western, in the country in Nigeria, if they see you for any crime scene, now you commit the crime. But where we have countries. In organized, in short, in countries where you call countries like you call Russia, you call UK, you call US, you call um, uh, what do you call it, Australia, you call Canada, you call Spain, you call Germany. These people, this one, even you can call them, um, you can call uh, Togo, you can even include Ghana, include Benin Republic, eh. It can even include the Burkina Faso countries. When they come to the crime scene, as Switzerland as well, when they come to crime scene, they will they will invite you. They will not touch you. They will just ask you, please, can you follow us to the station and tell us what you see? You will follow them to the station and they tell them what you saw. And after that, they will let you go and they will collect your contact and say, in case we do want to ask you anything tomorrow, can we? They are asking you. <laughs> I remember when I was in Swiss, I, I, I entered the train. I found the ring in the train. One small ring. And I didn't know that this ring is a real gold. I didn't know. So I just picked the ring. I just sat down, I just sat down where I sat, my hand touched something, I just took it, it was a ring, I was holding it, I just hold it, not, uh, and, and uh, had it been that police did not see me that day, I would have thrown it away, because it didn't look to me like a real gold. So as I came down from train station, I was just walking out of the train, they say control, 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 I say yes, the ring was in my hand like this, I just hold it like this, I lift my hands. As I search me finish, he said, What do you have? I said, This is it. He look up, he look up, he look up. Number was in the on the ring. They called the number and they asked me, Where did you get this ring? I said, I got this ring on the in the train. I'm just coming out from the train. And because they did not find it in my pocket, they did not find me hiding it, they believed me. Do you know what they did? They said, can you come with us to the station so we will make entry? I said, ah. So this, they said that this is gold. They told me, the policeman told me 
the place called the Vedum, that was in Swiss. They told me that this thing is a real gold. This thing worth thousands of dollars, thousands of francs. I said, eh? So the way I was reacting to it made them know that I don't even know I would have thrown it away. So they took me, they opened the door for me. I sit down for back like okay. They took me to the station. They asked me how I found it. I gave me, I gave them at the end of the whole thing. They gave me Coca-Cola, say make a drink. <laughs> After they gave me Coca-Cola, make a drink. You want anything? I said no while I was waiting. So at the end of the whole thing, they they, they asked me for my um uh, where I live. I tell them me, I know will tell you where I live. Oh. Because I don't get a permit to stay in the country. So I will not tell you where I live. I can only give you my phone number. If you want me anytime you call me, I will be here. They said, okay, that you drop my phone number with them. They are going to find who owns the ring. If they don't find who owns the ring, after a certain time, that they will call me to come and take the ring. And if the owner of the ring comes and want to know who picked the ring, that they will still call me to come and meet the person. After giving them the information, they asked me to go peacefully. But if not for Nigeria, hey, that ring, maybe by now, self, I for don't die for prison now. And they, they go collect the ring. He goes, police go collect them, go sell them, put the money for pocket. Why you, when no even pick them, say you want to farm, go remain for dungeon, unidentified, uh, um, no tried, untried, no trial, on, on no trial, you will remain and die there. That is Nigeria. So this is what we are saying. Nine be this, and nine be this for you. What am I saying? More confiscation is coming. More of Nigeria properties will be confiscated. There are more to what you see. There are more to what you know. There are more to what they are telling you. Nigeria is already empty. There is nothing left. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But I, I, it has surprised me that people are not understanding that Nigeria is over. It's game over. Even if the Mario game is over, no say Mario, no, they finish. It has finished. This is why you must support this quest for freedom. We need our freedom. And now we need our freedom. We need our freedom. Who don't know, we not know. We not understand that all you need now is freedom. I don't know if you if, if I should read um if I should read this news for us. Is it necessary? Is it necessary? Let me see if, if, if I can just go through it a little bit. Why Nigeria lost at air arbitration and the United States appeal to sanction the appeal in United States now, or they fell. Now, Fabwemi accuses firm of arm twisting tactics in order to seize Nigeria's asset abroad. Chinese company Zango Shan Fushan Industrial Investment Co. Limited is making move to seize. 20 million 20 million pounds judgment cost awarded in favor of Nigeria against P and ID. Oh, oh yeah. The 20 million pounds that Nigeria don't hope to say they go share. Your uh, Apabio and Co. don't hope as they go share them. 
<laughs> they have case with um i don't know the company that or what is this um uh, uh, this p and id is a company or an organization so nigeria want them from what we are reading now and they are going to pay nigeria 20 million pounds lawsuit so <laughs> the 20 million pounds in advance <laughs> up front the 20 million pounds is now up front going into chinese ports go we, we, we move listen one another thing the company which had earlier secured court judgment in france to seize two nigeria presidential plan plans is also working to confiscate two properties in liverpool belonging to the nigerian government in relation to the dispute between ogun state and the chinese firm i beg who know where is um is uh where, where, where which state is nigeria embassy in the uk is it in liverpool and where is their presidential lodge is it in liverpool if it is in liverpool you know that they are the two properties the chinese are targeting because i don't know what nigeria owns in britain that um the chinese company are targeting that will make them hold nigeria to ransom so i believe that is it <laughs> Meanwhile, Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister for Justice, Minister of Justice Latif Fabwemi, has accused the Chinese firm of resorting to arm twisting tactics in order to seize Nigeria asset in foreign jurisdiction. Also, former Ogun State Governor, Senator uh, Governor, Senator Ibikule Amosun yesterday called Zonshan and the Impostor uh, uh, called Zonshan and Impostor saying this dispute is like the P and the ID situation where Nigeria eventually prevailed and they called their attempt to seize Nigeria asset unlawfully. In March 2021, an arbitral arbitration tribunal shared by the president by the president of the UK Supreme Court awarded um, 74.5 million pounds and the 50 57.8 million pounds in compensation to the Chinese firm. Ogun State reportedly refused to pay this amount. Meanwhile, Nigerians' inability to prove to prove allegation of misrepresentation and the cons and the concealment of facts against Zango. Zion Shan, Zion Shan, among others, are said to be reasons the country lost its appeal against the arbitration award to the Chinese firm. A source from the United States of America court hinted this day. Well, you you see it yourself. We don't need to talk too much. We dare do it the show. That is where we are. We they do. Standing the difference. Now, quickly, we are going to be listening to the man hmm? tell you that there is nothing like uh, um, uh, um, what they call it, no prison for terrorists, no court for terrorists. So, if you are coming, whether in uniform, whether in camouflage 
whether in flash como anyhow you like it dress your code your dress code to come if you like it be a biafran to stand against biafrans when you come what you see you take you will only be showed a road that lead to god you go there and the god will have the best call to address you so let us listen to him Nigeria will continue to go down. I want to inform you this evening that the record we are breaking is unimaginable. The enemies are trembling, they are quaking, they are having meeting upon meeting in Asorok. Asorok will soon become a defunct Asorok. Believe me. I told them that we, this generation of Biafra, will never ever pass this struggle onto our next generation we are going to pass freedom onto them we are going to pass a better society a better country onto them we will pass a country that they are going to be proud of and they will be ready to die as a patriotic citizens of their friends i want to assure you today that nigeria is gone believe me nigeria is gone and it is happening from this your little little fundraising we are yet also and we are still expecting those that will fund the liberation of Biafra in a big way because we still have a long way to go. Today, I am telling you, Mazin Ambikano will be free. He will be released in a very historic way. And when this thing I am cooking is not done, he will not come out. Or oh, you see this food that I'm cooking? When the food is ready, they will be forced to release Mazin Ambikano. As I'm talking to you, there is meeting ongoing and they are scared that this Simon Ekpa will bring war. And I wonder what kind of war. I watched them in the mirror and they were discussing. I told them we are already at war. What type of war do you think Simon Ekpa is bringing that you have not brought to us? The only thing Simon Ekpa is doing now is to make sure that our women and children are well defended. It is not going to be only the terrorists in uniform. We are extending the defense of our land to those in ragtag. And the ragtag uniform or the ragtag terrorists that have been killing, abducting, terrorizing our people, their own face off will start from the 31st of this month. The entire Biafra land and border will be sealed. I've always said we don't have prisons. We are still in freedom fighting. We have no prison we have no food to give to anybody we don't have any place to put somebody and be feeding the person we don't have gary to give anybody so any i don't even body we don't have any gary to give any terrorists in our land and that is all i have to say we have no prison of our own we have no gary to give anybody so if we are caught if you are caught as a terrorist in our land our only thing we can do is to send you to God and let God judge the rest. I want you to understand that the defense of Biafra we are going to do to the last drop of our blood. We must not allow terrorists to run over our land like they have done out of Nigeria. We will continue to defend and neutralize those who have come to terrorize us who have been terrorizing us in the name of Nigeria Army, police, Air Force, or whatever they are carrying gun in our land. We will continue to neutralize them in order to stay alive, in order to make sure that our communities are not being burned down, in order to make sure that our women can go out without being harassed. We read in the newspaper how Biafra women are complaining and crying on the pages of newspaper that the terrorists are harassing them. They will continue to harass them and will continue to neutralize them. It is step we are not in a hurry so if if you, you see 10 checkpoints today don't worry it is taking time do you know how many years it take nigeria to bring us to this level we are today from 1914. you think it is going to end in one week no you think it's going to end in one month no we are taking our time gradually gradually they will all run away from biafra land and any day they hear biafra any anytime they hear indigenous people of biafra anytime they hear anything 
E, let alone you put GB or E, let alone you put Fion, my brother, they will treat you like a beast that I have never seen in their the life. I am telling you the fact. The glory of Biafra is back. We are not only going to make these people to pay, we will make sure they will never forget anything about us. And let me tell you, it is already happening. Our franchise, you think it is me they are talking about? You think it's about Simon Ekpa? No, it's not about Simon Ekpa. Simon Ekpa is just the name and the face they are seeing today. That's why I am in their mouth. It is about you, your identity, your heritage, who you are, the bravery you have demonstrated. Nigeria thinks that nobody can ever rise up again to challenge them. But this is where we are today. I told them I will be the last person that will fight this Biafra. After this fight, we will hand over freedom to our people. And I told them also that after I finish with Nigeria, after I finish with this terrorist Nigeria, anywhere they hear Sai, they will know that it is not just ordinary Njo or ordinary Sai that we believe in Bible, we believe in our ancestors, we believe in the spirit of our land, and they have all reason to show to the world that indeed there are people of God and we still exist. We will rise from Africa and Biafra will be the beginning of civilization. Why Nigeria continue to implement the eradication of innovation and the bringing of Sunai? We will continue to embrace civilization embrace western education embrace everything good of good life have to offer these people are nomadic they have not any agenda any plan to make your life a better to make you a, a make your life better or to make nigeria a better place for you with a, for anybody all they are after is islamic state agenda they want to make you poor so that you can never rise up against them. They want to make you beg, so you can never ever rise up to challenge them. And today, Biafra have defeated them. Defeated their hunger, we defeated their slavery, we defeated their starvation. And today, why others are crying and begging for food, Biafrans have never received one palliative, one bag of rice from Nigeria state. It has been like that from the time immemorial. And we can never, ever, ever, ever eat grass. There is nothing you can do to, for a lion in the jungle to eat grass. No matter how the jungle is, a lion can never eat grass. Biafras are lion in the jungle. And we have shown Nigeria that our lion attitude is just starting. They have wakened the sleep lion. And Ogadoha Janjanja. In the next few weeks, we will show Nigeria that we will destroy Nigeria and the rebuild Biafra. They won't. <laughs> My fellow Biafrans, do not allow Nigeria terrorist state, nor their agent and their fleet to tell you, you can't get your freedom. I am here to tell you that we are going to get our freedom and we are going to do everything possible for this particular freedom to be achieved. And I'm going to share it with you the story of Israel, which everybody knows about Israel, but many people do not know what Israel went through. And I will start with a man called Theodore Hazel. The Theodore Hazel was, should I say, a founder of the Zionist movement. Hazel was an Austro-Hungarian Jewish. He was a journalist, a lawyer, writer, and a political activist who was the father of the modern political Zionism. Many people are only hearing Israel, Israel, but they don't know what actually transpired that led to Israel becoming an independent state. Hazel formed the Zionist organization and promoted Jewish immigration to Palestine in an effort to form a Jewish state, in an mm. effort to form a Jewish state. Today, there is a Jewish state called Israel, state of Israel. Due to his Zionist work, he is known in the Hebrew Kozeb, a visionary of the state. He is specifically mentioned 
even in the declaration of Israel, Israel independence, this man was mentioned and is officially referred to as the spiritual father of the Jewish state. It is very important that our people, both especially the global ones, understand that your gullibility cannot stop the liberation of Biafra this year. Haza was born in Pest, Kingdom of Hungary, to a prosperous newly Jewish family. After a brief legal career in Vienna, he became the Paris correspondent of the Viennese newspaper. He confronted the, the anti-Semitic event in Vienna. I hope you understand what anti-Semitism means. He reached the conclusion that anti-Jewish sentiment would make Jewish assimilation impossible. This man single-handedly rose up, stood up because of the anti-Jewish activities across the world. He stood up one man and in 1896, Hazel published the pamphlet The Judean Start, in which he elaborated his vision for a Jewish homeland. Because of the attack, the anti-Jewish anti-Semitism, he had a vision. His ideas attracted international attention and rapidly established Hazel as major figure in the Jewish world. World. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Are you seeing some similarity in what we are doing today? The kidnap of Mazin and Dikano and the rise of Simon Ekpa and the Biafra government in exile. In 1897, Hazel convened what we call the first Zionist Congress in Basel. First ever. My fellow Biafrans, do you see some similarity? In 2023, we had the first ever Biafra convention in Finland first ever in the history of our freedom fighting. This man convinced the first ever Zionist Congress in Basel, Switzerland. In Switzerland, and was elected the president of the Zionist organization. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives. I am talking about 18-something, when Usman Danfodio was conquering the northern Nigeria. When Usman Danfodio was killing the Alsace, this man was busy having a vision for a Jewish state of Israel. And then he began the diplomatic initiative to build support for Jewish state. I am telling you that we are not land anywhere, but that was a vision. That was a vision and they pursued the vision. Some people who don't know anything how the world works will be telling you today who is the government, which is government is supporting you, which state is supporting you. Which, how can somebody support you when you are showing that you are an idiot? How can somebody support you when you are dependent on people and you have no thinking of your own? How can people support you when you have shown to be a slave to ordinary nomadic people who don't know what is civilization? But today, we have changed the narrative. Now they understand we are not slave to nomadic. Now they understand there must be a need to support the liberation and the freedom of Biafra. Now they understand that people of integrity have risen up to show that Biafra has people of integrity and standard. He began a series of diplomatic initiatives to build support for Jewish state, appealing unsuccessfully to German emperor. He appealed to German emperor was not successful. And Ottoman Sultan he appealed to all these people was, it was unsuccessful. At the sixth Zionist Congress in 1903, they have had the first one, the first, the second one, the third one, and the sixth one in 1903. Hazel presented the Uganda scheme. He even went as far as trying to build the state of Jewish state in Uganda of today. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that Israel had a vision to establish a state in Uganda? Present day Uganda. That is people, I don't know how many of you, and of course the global ones who are looking at what we're doing today are stupid and whatever. I don't know how many of them are aware of this, that Israel wanted to establish a state in Uganda, present Uganda. Championed by Hazel, this was endorsed 
by Colonial Secretary Joseph Chamberlain on behalf of the British government. The proposal, which sought to create a temporary refugee for the Jews, ultimately rejected. Hazel died, this man died at the age of 44 in 1904 and was buried in Vienna. Now, let us also go fast forward after the Hazel attempt to establish Jewish state in Uganda, which was supposed to be the temporary refugee uh, place because of the anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish that was on rampage all over the world, just like they are trying to annihilate the Afrans because of the light we carry. Are you surprised that what we are facing today in Nigeria is exactly what the Jewish people face all over the world? Then, Israel Declaration of Independence. I want you people to understand that the Declaration of Independence State of Israel was signed by 38 individuals. 38, 38 signed the document of the Declaration of State of Independence of, of Israel. Are you aware of that? Are you aware that it was only 38 people that signed to declare Israel as an independent state? You don't know. Now you are knowing it today. I'm explaining it to you. Formally, declaration of the establishment of State of Israel was proclaimed on the 14th May 1948 by a man called David Ben Gurion, the executive head of the World Zionist Organization. The Zionist organization that this Hazel founded, chairman of the Jewish Agency for Palestine and later the first Prime Minister of Israel. It declared the establishment of a Jewish state to be known as the State of Israel, which would come into effect on termination of the British mandate. Our own British mandate terminated in 2014. That was when the British mandate terminated. When they say you have 100 years after that, we decide. Nobody is talking about the agreement and how nigeria become a country from amalgamation to the independence to fake independence to today present nigeria they put it under the carpet because nobody have risen up to challenge them nobody have risen up to question the existence of nigeria until now we are questioning it under the biafra government in exile i will question it with gun we will question it with bomb we we'll question it with civil with civility. We we'll question it diplomatically, and we we'll question it politically. And that is the multi-dimensional approach. That thing they are avoiding to discuss that particular existence of Nigeria on continuation of Nigeria. They have been avoiding to discuss. Will be forced to discuss. They will be forced with the activities and the actions of the Biafra government in 2024. That's where we are going. That's why all these shenanigans, all this their uh, regional government and all this nonsense you see happening are happening today. And they have not actually started hitting the point because the point remain the continual existence of Nigeria as a country. They are not discussing it. What was the agreement of 1914? What was the agreement they have independent? What happened for after the hundred years of Nigeria? Nobody is discussing it. And we have seen Nigeria has become the worst and the evil state. A terrorist state it has become and such state should not be allowed out to stay even the next minute. That's why Biafra has decided to fight their way out. Not this kind, not the type of war we fought in the 67. That was a very big lesson that we have learned. And today we are fighting differently. I am telling you, if this liberation of Biafra is going to take us the next 20 years after the 2nd of December, we are ready for it. But let us continue so that you understand how freedom is fought. Because Many of you who have been in this struggle for the past 20 years actually was following people who do not know what they are doing. And it either they were being sabotaged, especially from Azin and Bikan, 
who set up the indigenous people of Biafra surrounded himself with criminals who were not actually fighting for freedom. Now, the event of the termination of the British mandate, Israel immediately wanted to declare their independence. Immediately, that termination of the British mandate, on the same night, the event is celebrated annually, the Declaration of Israel. Now, let me also inform you that the possibility of a Jewish homeland in Palestine had been a goal of the Zionist organization, the Zionists founded by Hazel since the late 19th century. In 1917, British Foreign Ministry Arthur Belfort stated in a letter to the British Jewish community leader, Walter Lord, that His Majesty government views with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people and we use the best endeavor to facilitate the achievement of this object. It's being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious right of existing non-Jewish community in Palestine or the right and political status enjoyed by Jews in other countries. Now they are supporting the establishment of the state of, of Israel. What happens to you that is yet to get support from the British government? Have you asked yourself that? Because they see that you have been conquered. Maybe you have been conquered. Maybe you don't have the balls to fight for what is your right. Maybe because you are an African and they have come to to understand that all of you are idiots but we are here to tell them that we are not idiots actually we're here to tell them that we are even more advanced more brutal getting our freedom even like they will ever imagine that is what this generation the government and the prime minister is trying to send the message we're sending to the world our freedom is so precious that we are ready to burn Nigeria down for us to be free. Through this letter, it become known to the Balfour Declaration. British government policy officially endorsed Zionism. Now, without the effort of Hazel and those that follow him, will British ever take them serious? The answer is no. Will anybody ever take State of Israel or the Jews seriously? Nobody will take them serious, but they stood up. From nowhere, a man from born in Hungary family, a man born in Hungary, stood up and said, I am forming the organization of Zionism. That is what led to the freedom of Israel today. That is what made Israel become the powerful, the most powerful, one of the most powerful countries in the world by one single man vision. And let me also inform you that this was necessary because of the violence against Jews all over the world, just like we are facing it today in Nigeria and solution has come through the government of Biafra. And let me also inform you that before the, the declaration of independent state of Israel, there was draft, declaration draft one, declaration draft two, and then declaration draft three. They have the first draft, the second draft, the third draft. I want you to understand that Biafra today, we have already the first draft and we are already in the second draft. We are not necessarily going to go to the third draft and like they did, but I'm just telling you the multidimensional approach. Remember that a few days ago, I have used Finland and I have compared what Finland did and what Biafra are doing. And I'm using Israel for you to understand that we have captured everything and it is woto woto. Israel had their first declaration draft. That first declaration draft was done by somebody called Berenson, Zuvi Berenson or V Berenson. One person drafted it, the declaration. The second draft was done by about five men. Five men drafted the second draft of the declaration of, of the state of Israel. The third draft was done by four men. I am telling you, after that, the declaration follows, which were signed by 38 persons. Now, drafting the test, the first draft of the declaration was made by this Berenson the legal advisor of the uh, trade union and later a justice of the supreme court at the request of pinchas rosen a revised second draft of the declaration was made by three lawyers a bahem and of course 
another one, David Rames. Meeting which include David and many others produce the final test. Today, the Afra government have what we call the Declaration Drafting Committee. Declaration Drafting Committee headed by Dr. Bryce Inokoma. Exactly the same thing. Now, you are seeing similarity in the state, in the pathway for this freedom and independent state of Israel. You have also seen similarity and the pathway to the declaration of the independent state of Finland. You are also going to see another similarity from another country when I'm going to mention them. This is to tell you, and when you look at this pathway, they are not the same. The Finland and the Finland pathway to, to freedom and Israel pathway to freedom is not the same. But what we are doing has similarity with Israel, with Finland. And there are many more which I'm going to, to tell you. What, what I'm using is called the multidimensional approach. Nigeria can never ever escape that. So we will make sure that if we, this fail, the other one will not fail. And if this one fail, the other one will not fail. And that's exactly what we are doing because Nigeria is a complex country. Because of the vested interest of the world powers, it needed a very complex solution. And we found it. We found it. We have solved the mathematics and they found X. And they don't even know that that mathematics is cooling in our fridge. So what we do is we are going one after the other to take the mat the solution, the uh, equation, the what we use to solve this mathematics and apply it to our everyday activities in the liberation of Biafra. Now, I want you also to understand that the vote of the 12th May 1945 was convened to vote on the Declaration of Independence. Three of 13 members were absent. They had 13 members to vote and three of these 13 members, they were absent and some of them were being blocked in besieged Jerusalem. The difference today is that we are not only in exile, we are also in the homeland. We have, so when they tell you, you are in exile, laugh at them. We have government in the homeland called the Biafra de facto government. When they mock you that, oh, these people are doing, of course, they are not, they are no longer laughing. That's why you see the increase of attack and propaganda against us, which I warned Biafrans a few days ago. I said, there is going to be an increased propaganda in Nigeria media. Don't fall for it. And that's, you see what's happening now because they have come to realize that it's like these people are not joking. No. It's like these people are getting attention even in the, in the United States. Too. It's like these people are having, you know, high level meeting with the United States Congress, United States government officials, and all that. This is no longer something should be that we should ignore. That's what you see happening on social media. Don't be distracted. I am not distracted. Actually, the more this propaganda comes, the more I get energy. So it is what is giving me energy is their propaganda. And once that propaganda stops coming, I will manufacture something that will make them to start talking. So what am I saying? The meeting started at about 13, 45 in the afternoon and ended midnight decision to declare the independent state of uh, Israel. Now, the decision was between accepting the American proposal for truce, which means at this point, there was already Idwa Kanonu, there was already fighting between Israel and whoever that hates them. And America was pressuring Israel for truce. While Israel is contemplating declaring their independent or accepting the pressure coming from America for a truce. And if they had accepted America for a truce, Israel would not be an independent state day to day. I want you to listen attentively. America was telling Israel, making a proposal for a truce. Israel was discussing between declaring their independence or listening to America. So they decided not to listen to America. The later option was put to a vote with six of the 10 members present supporting it. So out of the 13 person that should be voting, three was absent. Out of that three that was absent, it remained only 10 person. So now that 10 person now decided to vote whether to declare Israel as a state, uh, independent state, or to agree on America proposal to for a truce. So they put it to vote. Now, six person voted to declare independence of Israel. Four person voted not to declare, to follow America. Are you listening to me? How many? Four versus six, only two person made the difference. What you see Israel become today. So when you are talking about Biafra, or people are telling you don't do this, uh, don't listen to them. One person can make a difference. One person. Now, I am telling you this history 
so that you will now compare what we are doing where we are today just within two years and you see that what we are doing is divine when god said the time has come even if you call simon a witch the witch will possess me and deal with you and i will accept the witch to possess me some of them say i'm a witch i agree and i accept it and you know what witch can do now six person voted for the declaration four person voted against it and their names are there for everybody in israel to see who were against the declaration and who actually voted for it so which of the side of history are you supporting today which side of the history are you for biafra or are you against for biafra are we going to remember you as those who fought simon Ekman? at the end of the day when you see 24 hour electricity we will be looking at your name somewhere in the history book which side of the history are you going to be part of are you going to be part of those that their names will be written and their signature will be on the declaration of biafra document in finland 2024 because this history we are doing from 2023 uh, biafra convention first ever they never believed that actually you can have convention in exile we did it <laughs> they didn't believe they were there oh they say you're paying money to come to finland you came to finland we had many declaration including helsinki declaration document which is the biafra charter we had the helsinki ambazonia declaration which is the alliance between biafra and ambazonia all those things are going to come later on in the history book and people are going to study how we have smarted the most ruthless and the terrorist country in africa now those who voted for the declaration of independence of Biaf of uh, israel now after that they now went into final wording of the of the declaration the draft test was submitted for approval to the meeting of the motels ham in tel aviv on 14th may the meeting started again around 1 50 in the afternoon and and, and ended three o'clock an hour before the declaration was due to be made despite ongoing disagreement members of the council anonymously voted in favor of the final test of the declaration during the process there were two major debates countering on issues of border and religion. I want you to understand that the state of Israel, when they were debating about their border and religion, they decided to omit anything border. Do you understand? Israel declaration do not, did not have a border. They don't know the map of Israel, of the state of Israel. But therefore today, we have our map defined. Subject to whoever that want to dispute it, subject to the a democrat, the most widely accepted democratic system which is referendum which we have already conducted and conducted so today biafra has a map biafra has state structure biafra has every government institution put in place but israel declaration don't have a map israel don't have a map and they decided to declare independent with that map and they said the un can now decide what the map are what the map will be i am telling you this is something that you need to understand how freedom is being fought you don't allow people to ride you the borders were not specified in the declaration although its 14th paragraph indicated a willingness to cooperate in the implementation of the un partition plan the original draft have declared that the borders will be decided by the united nation partition plan why it was supported by some people it was opposed by another and some other people within the israel cabinet there we accepted the ua resolution but the arab did not they are preparing to make a war on us if we defeat them and capture western galilee and territory on both sides of the road of jerusalem this area will become part of the state are you listening so many things were not defined by the state of israel during their declaration today we have met every requirement we have done more than any country in the world before or pre declaration period we have met the statehood we have made the categories to be recognized according to the montevideo convention on statehood we overqualified we have built our own defense forces we have our own liberation army we have state to state 40 state of united states of biafra we have administrative administrators state executive council running each state we have also developed the state structure as we are adopting the confederating state of biafra and it's going to be a confederation state so everybody should understand that 
Do not listen to what Nigeria is trying to sell to you that it is undoable. Do not listen where they say, oh, they are just in exile. We are not in exile. We control them. We control the territory of Biafra. We are not in exile. We are also in the homeland controlling our territory, making sure that we delegitimize Nigeria as fast as possible. Today, nobody will carry gun and walk freely under Nigeria. You will be gone down. And if you succeed, even if you are walking, uh, carrying gun as a Nigeria, you will be looking left and right. You, you're not going to have peace. I will never give them peace until they withdraw from our land. Our main objective and aim today is to make sure that Nigeria withdraw their terrorists they call army, the terrorists they call police, the terrorists they call air force that are coming to bombard innocent people in Biafra land. That is our target. And this target must be met. After December, we must make sure that we have nothing else to do other than neutralizing the presence of Nigeria in our land, including attacking the presence, their presence, their offices, because this is where they stay and plan and execute the attack on Biafra people, the terrorism against us, against our women and children. Those offices, barracks, must not be allowed to stay under Nigeria in Biafra territory. And that's the next thing we are going. So 2nd of December is a day that the beginning of the end of Nigeria within our territory will start. My people, do not allow anybody to dictate to you that what we are doing now have not been done before. We don't need them to have been done before. We develop the system that works for us. We develop the way we are going to leave Nigeria. And it is only us that this particular system and approach is going to work for. Nobody else. Because nobody else has been subjected to the manner of system that we have subjected to in Nigeria. My brothers and sisters of Biafra, rejoice! The days ahead will be light. And Nigeria will know that those people they killed in the 60s have possessed all of us. And when we don't have answers to many questions, they give the answers to us. That's why they can never understand what is happening until the end of this, of this road. I am standing very strong and the Biafra will be declared in this country. And we are going to defend it with our guns. We are going to defend it with our men that are very gallantly waiting for a day that the show will begin. I welcome you in Australia. Those of you listening to me in Australia, remember the most important thing we have now is the support from the IOU, from the fundraising, until those people who are hiding somewhere thinking that we are joking will understand that this is not actually a joke. You needed to come out to do more than the Israel did. And in the next 10 years, those who, who are mocking us today will be put to shame. People in Australia, remember that what you are doing today, you are making a history that will never ever be forgotten. As I was reading and mentioning names of people who made the Israel independent possible, you are also making the same history for yourself because your names will be mentioned just like when we begin to talk about those who supported this, this liberation of Biafra from Australia, we'll begin to mention your names. These are your names will come one way or the other in the Biafra document. It can never be wiped away from the surface of the earth. We will write how we visited state to state, country to country, soliciting for fund, and they were laughing at us. They will tell you how Simon Ekpa was so, so stubborn and didn't listen to anybody. And from nowhere, they were calling him that smart thing in Finland. But today, look at the change of things. It is no longer that smart thing in Finland. You see that that smart thing in Finland has grown like a big python, swallowing all the evil in Nigeria. And it is going to happen koro koro in their eyes. They will say, what were we doing? This guy don't go foul. That is how it is going to end. I am telling you the fact, this thing that is going to happen in Finland from 29th of November to the 3rd of December, will be the highest history made in humankind for freedom fighting. I welcome you all. Thank you for inviting me in Australia. Let God touch your mind to understand that we need fund to buy arms and ammunition to defend our land. Thank you. All right, uh, <clears throat> my people of Yafra, I greet you all again and again and again. Um, <laughs> you see, when people no understand, they no go know. 
for truth when people know understand they know go know waiting they go on like i told us earlier this morning nigeria never finish hmm? they never finish where i mean nobody say uh, something good they can't happen no they never finish that is their destruction never finish the end is just about to begin for those that don't understand like i told you earlier today the Chinese firm is go. I asked the question here before. Uh, Abi Omo Odua. Abi Omo Odua. Um, I think you are the one that came to the space. You was in the space or you were in the space asking for this thing you're asking and the PM have identified or have explained this to you. Anybody that is bad is bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. the same way you have the bad people in my people amongst my people evil is the same way they are there amongst the people here but so nothing differentiate them they are all bad people you don't expect me to tell you they are good when they are not good they are not good there eh? they are bad everywhere they are all oppressors of their own people all of them from beginning to end are oppressors and uh, there will be no peace for any oppressor of any form of any kind. I tell you the truth. They will never have peace. I tell you. No peace for any of them. So like I was saying before, the Chinese firm, I asked the question before, I don't know who knows where is Nigerian embassy located in United Kingdom. That was the question I asked. Is it um in is it I think Manchester? Where did they say this is going to happen? Liverpool, because the Chinese firm is about to seize two Nigeria properties in Liverpool. After they have taken twenty million pounds, hmm? twenty million pounds. This one is physical cash, yeah and two private jet, two presidential jets and the two more uh nigeria properties mm, uh, landed properties in the united kingdom so i am asking where is nigeria embassy in the united kingdom i think i have to find it out myself so instead of asking nobody want to answer me mm -hmm. where is nigeria embassy in the united kingdom who knows tell me now embassy okay then okay where is it located um Nigeria High Commission of was London, United Kingdom. I don't know. Who knows where will it where it is? Where are you come to Morocco? <laughs> uh, remember to put a link to come in. Chukuma Solomon, you want to come in? Okay, now let me give you a link to call me. Let me give you a link. Call me. Okay. That is the link there. Um, Where is United? Oh, no, no, no. Mm. It's in London. It's in London. So I don't know the property they want to confiscate in the United Kingdom, in uh, Liverpool. I don't know. But whatever happens, I just want to make you understand that the thing, where did they hide from Mama and Papa? Now, finally, Mama and Papa go settle them. Nigeria has nothing good to offer. Nigeria the dc people if you go to the nigerian news now as me and you are talking 
they will not tell you all these things. They will not show you any of these things. Hmm? So make you understand. You see, yeah, why are they talk? Why are they try make people understand the BC? Nigeria no day anywhere to come back. Nigeria is over and is over. So when you see the people telling you this and that and that, you don't waste your time. The best thing that will happen to you is for you to fight for your freedom. And that your freedom is what we are into now. If you know join hand to fight to bring your freedom, you join hands with the enemy against your own people will not yield anything. It will not work. I showed you, if you go back to the beginning, I showed you where Obasanjo is telling you that he used to, they have to use Igbos against Igbos. They have to use Igbos against Igbos. It's just for you to understand that this is no big joke. So it's either you take your freedom or somebody else will take your freedom. Like it or leave it. Emazi, you're welcome. Emazi Chukuma, you're welcome. Can you hear me? Yes. You have the mic. I don't know if you can hear me. Emazi Chukuma, can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you okay. now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. You have the mic. Okay. Okay, good morning, my brother. You're welcome. Uh, good morning, my brothers and sisters that are listening and those that will watch come across this video later. I uh, welcome each and every one of you on today's program. Please stay tuned and remain focus. We are very close to our destination. We are very close to our destination. And we had our PM giving us an example of people that are fighting, that, that already fight for the independence, how they managed to get it, who and who was involved, how many people were involved, and their, their activities they carry on that made give them independence. So I want you, everybody to remember us and remember focus. And don't forget that our, our PM is still in the kitchen, cooking, very delicious meal. And when this food done, you know what is take. So you require firewood, Fish and ingredient to cook a soup, and you know, a better soup is money concerned. We want to cook a better soup to use money. So, please continue for those that are supporting, continue to do your best. And the school cover for me, will continue to release your pocket, whatever, while we are still going on. Thank you, my brother. Uh, I'm with you. So, whenever I need my attention, I'll come in and I'll contribute on my own. Thank you, my brother. There were no shinamazi. Thank you so much. That if you listen to what our PM said in this video, we just watch how you will understand that we don't have choice but to continue to fight. If you have not been supportive, bro, welcome. If you see what is falling on Nigeria now, you will understand that Nigeria have no tomorrow for you. Mm -mm. No tomorrow for you at all, at all. For those of you that are thinking that um, you are going to protest and after you protest, things will change. I want to ask a question. What do you feel or what you believe Tinubu is going to do for Nigeria to work? Nothing. There is nothing Tinubu can do to fix Nigeria. Nobody can fix Nigeria, be it anybody. If anybody tells you, I have solution, I'm going to fix Nigeria, bro, that person, they lie. That person say he is or she is lying. There is nobody anywhere that can fix Nigeria for you. Nigeria don't finish. There is nothing to fix about it. So we have to close this program. 
it's so we'll get into two hours it's too early let me have to go and freshen up and jump out again a new brand day so i welcome you all once again anyway you're watching this program from try and like this video for me i beg you try and like the video for me please try and like it for me remember to support this government financially physically spiritually in every area you can mm -hmm. uh donate the uh donate donate your little token okay i will send you now biafra republic government dot org mm -hmm. biafra republic government dot org If you go there, who is saying that? Oh, no, 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 please link. Okay, I cannot do it. Okay. If you go to follow that link, if you go there, you will see the option to donate. Then you can do your donation. Ezoku, you are welcome. Maze, good morning, now. And there will Maze. No. Well done, sir. God bless you for your consistency. You see, you're welcome. Yes, sir. I want to also thank our Prime Minister, Master Simon, the man who has stand by the bus, the bus the nothing, nothing that the zoo <coughs> will do. You know, it was then. Some people still believe that uh, they can continue to do a particular thing and the expecting a uh, a new result. We want to let them know that it's not true. Hello, Mazi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, yeah, some people felt that way, and that is a, is a wrong is a wrong system. You know, yeah. people who don't know themselves and they believe that they can continue to protest. What are you protesting? The last time you protested, what happened? Mm. You know, so these are the things. It's just a very simple uh, question someone should ask himself. You don't need anybody to begin to tell you anything. Of course, all of us had or uh, saw what happened on the 2020. Yes, that was on the Lake Gate when they protested with mm. their with their usual uh, green white green flag, mm. and they were they were they were dealt with that day. They were dealt with. Some of them flee, flee away. Those who has opportunity to run away, they run away. And at the end of the day, the same thing that 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 you know uh, prompted them to go and uh, protest. We're not still done. We're not still done. So, and yet they come up again with the same method. How then do they believe that they can still get a positive result? It is still negative. They should, the earlier they are, are realize this, it is better for them. All. Everything has come to a point whereby people should begin to do different things. That is why our prime minister said that we don't have prison. We have no prison for anybody. So, uh, and then we are not uh, ready to have one now. Uh -huh. So, because uh, there is a place meant for such individuals who have decided to become a, a thorns in the flesh of the people of God. So today, it is a new dimension. A new dimension, that's where we are. And we continue in this new dimension until Biafra is restored. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, um, we are going to be uh, rounding up now. And uh, as we round up, uh, we have to take this video. And I will say thank you so much. If you don't like this video, uh, I send you the link. Onova, Onova Gladys. I just send the link after your um, after your message, after your chat. I just dropped you the message just after you immediately. So go there support this movement thank you so much every one of us and bye for now
peoples in Nigeria want to talk about Biafra, whenever they want to talk about unifying all the Igbo speaking people all over the world, people tend to tell them, mind your five states, mind your five states. And that makes me laugh hysterically. That begs the question and left me wondering, what do you people even think a state is? Listen, a state is a political creation, a political territorial integrity that tends to separate families from families, that tends to separate brothers from brothers. That was why Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie in half of a yellow sun said, I am a Nigerian because the white man created Nigeria and gave me that identity. I am black because the white man constructed black to be as different as possible from his white. But I am Igbo before the white man came. So how can you allow what is a political creation to determine your origin? And in case you don't know, it was on the 27th of May 1967 that Yakubu Gowon created 12 states out of the old eastern region. Why did he do that? When you read There Was a Country by Chinua Achebe, you will find out that Gowan did that simply because he wanted to landlock the Igbos. He wanted to weaken the strength of the old eastern region because he knew that the black gold, which is the crude oil, is one of the prime motivation of the Biafran secession from Nigeria. And so he wanted to crumble the Biafran strength. And because he noticed that the people that reside at the Delta area dread the core Igbo domination. And so he wanted to give them a sense of ownership that these people are not your people. You are on your own. And they succeeded because today brothers are denying brothers simply because they are not in the five so-called states. They say where Igbos only belong. And I laugh because you are a victim of gumbo diplomacy. You are a victim of Machiavellian manipulation. You are a victim of gumbo diplomacy. And such perception is shibolite and antidolivan. I hope you get enlightened. And when you want to talk, people want to talk about South-South. What is South-South? South-South is a political creation, something that was created out of Machiavellian manipulation, a region that was created because of negative ethnicity. South-South was created in 1990. How will you allow what was created barely 28 years to determine your origin? What a pity. Listen, when Lulugad came to Nigeria, he met something. He met something, and that was why he tried to amalgamate what he met in 1914, the North and the South Protectorate. Use your head. Let me point history to you in case you want to learn. It was on the 7th of October, 1949, that Germany divided into two. You had the East and the Western Germany. Why? The Western Germany was in alliance with the United States of America, with Britain and France, and they wanted to be a capitalist state. And the East Germany was in alliance with Soviet Union, and they became a communist state. And because of that, Germany was divided into two, the East and the West Germany, on the 7th of October, 1949. But because they are Europeans and they knew their core origin, they worked constructively towards unifying Germany and they achieved it on the 10th of October 1990. The wall that divided Germany was brought down and Germany was unified at last. But I tell you for a fact, if Germany was to be in Africa, to date, you will still be having the East and the Western Germany because I don't know why we have allowed our the lies they told us to sink into us hook, line, and sinker. Who did this to you? Who did this to you? Tomorrow, someone from Congo, Brazil, will say it's not related to someone from the Democratic Republic of Congo or Sudan and South Sudan. How can you want to landlock a nation with just five states? That is unacceptable. If you can have Yoruba speaking people in Togo and Igbo speaking people in Cuba, how come you cannot have Igbo people in rivers and Igbo people in Delta? You want to tell me the Igbos in Cuba are not Igbos. So if you accept such lie, how do you want to live with it? Stop lying to yourself. I thought you would have learned by now. Because on the 7th of October, 1967, 
when the federal troops entered Asaba, the people of Asaba welcomed them and said, we are not Igbos, we are one Nigeria. What happened? How did the federal government respond? They buy over 800 to 700 people. Yet, you have not learned. You cannot be welcomed where you are not welcomed. I am not a promoter of negative ethnicity. I do not indulge myself in tribalism, but I have a conscious effort to make sure that people unify with their origin, irrespective of where you are in Africa. And for those of you in West Africa, God bless you. And those in all parts of Africa, God bless you. But the better and the earlier you start on learning what they forced you to learn, the better for you. In 1967, your state was created on the 27th of May, 1967, by Yakub Gowan, 12 states. All of a sudden, you said the people that were previously in your states are no longer your brothers because of a political creation, because of a political engineering. State is not a divine creation. State is man-made. Use your head. Rebrate yourself. Rebrate yourself before it's too late, Africa. For wisdom, Africa, wisdom. Have mercy on we, we are from. Lord, give us a freedom. Have mercy on we, we are from. And give us a freedom. Lord, have mercy on we, we are from. And give us a freedom. Fire, we need our leader. Prophet. Martin and Yokuchukukano. We need our leader. Martin and Yokuchukukano. We need our leader. Martin and Yokuchukano. Come on.